What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome on into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Hope you guys are enjoying a nice, stress free weekend after the Thursday night win. There's no need to worry about Sunday at all. We can all just sit back, kick our feet up, and watch some football. But I do want the Broncos to do a little bit more than sit back and kick their feet up. I want to go over some changes I'd like to see the Broncos make during their mini buy. right? When you play on Thursday night, you get 10 days before your next game, and the Broncos are going to come back and face the Carolina Panthers at home, and then they've got a couple of tough matchups after that, right? They go to Baltimore. They go to Kansas City they come back and face the Falcons who are looking really good I mean you got a couple of four or five win teams right there following the Panthers and you don't get a break until week 14 so there are some changes I want to see Denver make during this mini buy capitalize on it since their actual buy is still very far away first change I want to see the Broncos make is work on Bo Nix's footwork we're going to get in a little bit of the nitty-gritty here for X's and O's, but I do think last night, or sorry, two nights ago, whatever it was, Thursday night, showed us some um, tough plays from Bo Nix. And hey, a win's a win, so no one's going to dive too deep in the negatives, but I mean, there were some missed opportunities. Let's uh, just get right to the point here. There was this one play where Bo Nix, I'm not sure if this is just a horrible throw to Lucas Kroll, a really bad throw to Troy Franklin, who's sitting past him, or a change of heart at the last moment where he wants to go to Kroll but decides, no, let's go deep to Franklin. Either way, the footwork is probably one of the biggest issues here. I mean, look at what he's throwing off of. It's a clean pocket, but he's not in his routine base. I mean, look at this other throw right here on a slant. It's on the money. His footwork is in position. I think far too often your average fan looks a lot at just the overall arm strength and whatnot when evaluating quarterbacks. Footwork, you talk to the real X's and O's experts of this game, and they're gonna tell you a footwork is or footwork is nearly just as important as your overall arm strength when it comes to a quarterback who is progressing during their rookie season. So for me, I want to see Bo Nix's footwork improve. A lot of this comes down to coaching things that they can work on during their week of practice. So Sean Payton and this offensive coaching staff have their work cut out for them because Nick showed us that he's not going to cost you games, but right now we need to see the ability for him to win the Broncos games. And it's still only his rookie season. I'm not going to read into this very much at all, but I want to see improvements from week to week. And this is something we can see Nick's improve on because so far through seven games, five touchdowns, five interceptions, 1,200 yards. And for a guy that led the FBS in completion percentage last year, he is certainly learning the hard way how much uh, more difficult it is in the NFL, just completing 61% of his passes. But the overall good takeaway here is Nix is not regressing. And far too often we see rookie quarterbacks either get thrown out there too quickly or thrown out in a really tough position, not have a good support staff around them, whether that's personnel or coaching staff, and things start to go downhill once talent starts to wear out a little bit. That is not the case for Nix, but I just want to see incline, right? I just want to see him taking things that he can work on and improving it. So for the next stage for Bo Nix, after watching the turnovers go down following the first two weeks of the season, let's watch the footwork increase over the next two to three weeks of the season. So now that we are approaching the halfway mark of the 2024 season, how would you grade Bo Nix so far? I'd give Bo Nix a B- minus to B. That might sound harsh to a lot of you, but I think Bo Nix from the eyes of Broncos country has done pretty well. From the eyes of the rest of the NFL, He's looked like a mid-rookie quarterback, and hey, that's perfectly fine. He's a rookie. There's no need to panic or overreact or anything like that. I'm going to evaluate him once the season ends a lot more than just after seven games. So for me, I'd give Bo Nix a B-. minus. I do want to hear from everyone watching, though, so don't be afraid. Scroll on down. It is the pinned comment, so if YouTube sticks an ad break right around now, take advantage of it and give me your thoughts. Next change, how about some more RPO? We saw some, you know, just sprinkles of it during the Thursday night victory, but I think this could really complement one of Nick's more underrated or underappreciated skill sets, and that is his mobility. I mean, Nick's continues to flash his wheels, but I want to open up the film a little bit here and go back to this play, which results in a Javante Williams eight-yard run 
And that's not going to go down to the box score as this big, huge splash play. But it all starts from the RPO because Nix here has an option, right? He can either hand it off to Javante Williams or he can fling it out to Jaleel McLaughlin. And Nix does an excellent job of reading this play. Look at the defenders to the left of the hash. I got one, two, three, four guys over there. Four defenders taking care of three offensive players. So just from a numbers perspective, Nix recognizes, okay, we've got numbers on our right side. Strength in numbers. Let's hand it off to Javante Williams. And that's a huge asset when trying to get the ground game going, which has been, you know, start and go on and off throughout much of the season so far. So let's see the RPO grow a little bit because I think it really benefits Williams. And I also think you can add a kind of a third wrinkle to the RPO, which is hand it off to Javante, throw it to Jaleel, or if you don't really like either option too much, how about you sneak in a quarterback option too? I know we're putting a little bit on Nix's plate, but he played five years in college football. I think he can handle it. I think Nix has shown us that he is an excellent runner, and every single opposing team learns this mid-game. Broncos country knows it going into the week, but Nix has been arguably this team's best running back so far. I mean, 47 carries, 255 yards, three touchdowns so far on the season. So Bo Nix has shown an ability to really rush the football very well. Now, before we get any further in today's episode, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, which is Game Time. Game Time has an awesome deal right now for Broncos Country where you can get $20 off your first purchase when you use promo code CHATSPORTS. One thing I love about Game Time is they offer Game Time Picks, which basically filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste plenty of time, hours searching for the best deals. No, with Game Time, they can get you right to the punch. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHAT Sports for $20 off. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Third change I want to see get made over this 10 day stretch. I want some more Javante Williams. I know this has been a rocky relationship in terms of playing and analytics and production out of 33, but. We're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm with Pookie, and I want to strike while the iron is hot here. So Williams in seven games so far, averaging a little over four yards a carry, two touchdowns, both of which came against New Orleans on Thursday night, and just got over 300 yards as well. Nearly had his first 100-yard performance on Thursday. If not for a holding call, he would have gotten there for sure. But best game of the season, without a doubt. 14 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns. And you look over the last four weeks here, three out of those four weeks, he's gone over 60 yards, which I know isn't a tremendous milestone, but we're seeing improvement. We're seeing him build off of these games and get better and better as the season goes along. And we're also seeing him have a larger role in this offense. I mean, just look at his snap count so far. From week four to week seven, 35, 41 snaps, it's building up and up, and if it was not a blowout against the Saints, that 41 probably would have been something like 46, 47. I mean, we saw the rookie, Audric Estime, kind of have the last few snaps of the game, which that fumble was, you know, unfortunate, but whatever. So regardless of that, Williams getting a larger role in this offense, and I think that's the right move. I mean, ride the hot hand here. I love the one-two punch of Williams and McLaughlin, but right now you've got something going with Javante, and that is what you wanted to get out of him since the moment you drafted him, yards after contact. That's what he did best at Chapel Hill. He was impossible to take down with just one defender. We didn't see that guy in September. Now it's October, right? The blacks and blues are starting to tie pile up a little bit here. The hits are hurting a little bit more for defenders. So start giving it back. That's what Javante at 220 pounds does so well. He's going to make it miserable over the course of four quarters to tackle him just one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to take an army to take this guy down. I want to see more touches go to 33. 
Now, if you tuned in and enjoyed our Week 7 watch party, type me down below in the comment section. Really appreciate everyone who watched the game with us. We had a blast on the channel here. If you missed it, no sweat. We're going to have another watch party for Week 8 against the Carolina Panthers. So hang out with us on Sunday uh, or next Sunday, whatever it is, as we break down the Week 8 matchup. And hopefully the Broncos can improve to 5-3. and three. Before we get on out of here, I do want to show some love to the Blue and Orange Club. Slap yourself, I don't give a buck, John E., and then some of our newest members, Anthony Mastasis, Bobby Leglocks92, and Rick Callister. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, for hanging out with us on Thursday. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are not already. We're going to keep you in the loop all season long. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed our content today, and I'll catch you guys later.